All right, so what we are looking for, we are looking to pull up our brushes menu. I'm gonna drop down where it says brush library menu. I am then going to go other library. Now I have saved mine to the desktop. My brushes are hanging out here. So a lot of times if you're downloading from a resource resource folder, this is where those are gonna be hanging out. So I'm gonna go comic strip brushes. If I can do both of those, okay. We'll do brushes one, do it again. Brushes two. And just so you can see the difference, I'm gonna have all sorts of ones now, is some of these are fat to taper and then some of them are just skinny, fat, taper at the both ends. So there's just basically two of those. And I'm just gonna do it this way, just so we're not staring at a thousand different brush menus. Okay. So these are all our hand-painted brushes. And if you ever wanna know how to do those, it's a bit, I just painted some lines, scanned them in, and then uh, created some brushes. So it wasn't that big of a process. You just have to have some paint brushes, I guess. So what we are looking for is we want to grab our lines. Notice I am on the black arrow, and we can just zoom in. And I just wanna be on our tapered ones. So most of these will be tapered so you're gonna notice that these are all floating in space. Floating in space, so there's not a lot that are gonna be tapered on one end, but it does happen. And what we're gonna to look to do is my recommendation is you can bounce around. Each one is gonna have its own little subtle variation to it. Some are gonna be smoother than others. Some of them are gonna be bouncier than others. Now they will keep a pretty similar format. So the smaller they get, sometimes the bouncier they get. Now my recommendation too is just keep them all pretty similar. You will notice as we do these, so notice how long this one is. That one was pretty clean, so it wasn't as choppy. If you want it to be really choppy, you can always come over and do a very skinny one. And then as you keep doing your brushes, typically this will start to bounce a little bit more on you. So it just depends on what kind of effect you're going for. And we can pretty much just, let's just simplify our lives right now. So I'm just grabbing pretty much all of them. And now we can just fatten them up. And if you want to drop any ever, so let's see these inside ones. Drop those down. All right, looking good, looking good. I might want that one to be a little bit fatter. Now with these brushes, there's a bunch of them. So what's kind of fun is just playing around with what the effect is doing. I might do a little bit fatter. All right, let's grab that one, make it a little bit fatter. Notice these are all still in stroke format. So I'm just playing around with how fat I want things right now. All right, I say that's good to go. I am happy with that. So I'm gonna go file save. Now you're gonna still notice that we have all of the silly overlapping lines. So this is where we are going to start doing the cleanup. So this is the one we spent a bunch of work basically getting to this step. So this is the one that you want to make sure that you have duplicated it. Because now we are going to expand and we are going to erase. We're gonna start un uniting things using Pathfinder. So this is where everything is going to start to close up. So what we are looking to do is I have duplicated, I have locked it out, and I've also turned it off. So I want to select everything. I'm gonna go to Object, Expand. I think actually we got it on that one. Look at that, one and done. Making our life easy today. So everything now has been expanded. So everything is now seen as a 
basically a shape rather than a stroke. So what we want to do now, we're gonna zoom, zoom, zoom. And this is where we start to do the cleanup. So I want this ear to be in front. So I'm gonna go Shift E. That's just our eraser, by the way. So notice that I grabbed it with the black arrow. I go Shift E if I wanna ever change the size of the brush. That is the bracket key. Bracket keys are next to the P. And all we are looking to do is hide that edge within itself. So what we are looking for is go, all right, there is the arm. I want this hand to go in front. And then I can just get rid of it. I want to get rid of that little guy right there. Shift E. Get rid of all of that. Grab the belly. So just notice that as I'm grabbing it, it looks like I'm deleting everything, right? And then it's only going to delete what I want. So I just want that little nugget. This line, as long as it's hiding in there, can be as gross as possible. Doesn't even matter. All right, I think that was it. Man, our life was easy today. That was ridiculously too easy. A lot of times that takes forever. All right, hand. That was it, file save. I'm gonna grab all of the black, and then I'm going to, let's unite those. So I'm gonna go Pathfinder, Unite. I am then going to go right click, arrange, and then send to back. Right now those are all filled. I'm kind of okay with that. And what I'm referring to is the highlights. Okay, I am ready for live paint. So right now, as we move into live paint, what it's gonna do is it's, if you've done paint bucket with Photoshop before, it's a very, very similar process. But whenever there's open gaps, that was what it is not going to like. So if I wanna color anything individually, so let's say if I want to color the inside of the ears separately, if I want to make sure that the body is getting filled in, I will have to fill in these gaps. So let's just come in, and we're just going to keep our lives easy. We just did all a bunch of hard stuff, so now we're going to go nice and easy. So you're going to know we're going to go segment, and we are going to have basically no fill, no stroke. And I can just basically connect them. That's it, that's it. Now for this one, I might do a little bit of a curve. So that's just a little bit of a shift C. I think I gotta do these ears. Let's go back to segment. I'm gonna do shift C on that one. Good. Did I already do that one? Okay. Shift C. All right. Control zero. Let's just double check. And you'll find out pretty quick if uh, it's just going to yell at us that says we can't color it. So we're going to go. We are going to grab everything. I'm going to go object, live paint, make. We're going to get these fun little arrows. Now the idea here is, number one, we're able to, to fill in, we're able to color, which is awesome. The thing that we're also getting around is all of the Pathfinder. So if you are not a big fan or if you're getting really frustrated with Pathfinder, this is a great version because it basically fits in exactly where we want with all of these little shapes. All right, so the only ones I am missing are these ears. So notice that I, it's not highlighting right there. So we'll do another little version. Maybe we'll come back with our, our knife tool knife tool later. So I'm going to go K. And let's just stay grayscale for right now. And we'll definitely come back in and we will just color things up. Gray, 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 gray. So notice those ears get filled in. So there was no little mini lines right there. So wherever I had my little mini lines, 
he can distinguish between where each one of those are. So let's go gray here. And then let's just go white. Now, even if it's white, I'm doing a kind of an off gray, by the way. That is ex okay. The idea is I want everything to be colored. So I want a shape. Even if it's going to be white, I still want to fill that in. All right, that was it. We can always change colors, and we're going to basically bring in a color palette. I'm going to expand. One mistake I see a lot of my classroom students make is they don't expand after live paint. So notice our little weird boxes. They kind of color everything. They say, yay, that looks good, and then they move right into the next step. So just make sure you expand. Hit OK. Everything is going to be grouped. So usually the magic number is 3. Ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. We got it in two today. So as long as I can come back in and color each one of these, we're going to be good. So while I am thinking about it, let's do our little ear. So I'm going to grab my ear. Some of you have seen this on other tutorials. Just come in with the knife tool. And we'll be able to just come in. And then we can color it. Same thing is true. Grab it. There you go. Deselect. Color. Looking good. Let's grab some circles. Now I am just going to do a really, really basic little cast shadow under here. So I want to grab that. Arrange. Let's just send it back right now so we can see where everything is. I want this to be pretty flat. Now I want this circle to come in and let's just hit that front. So if I said front heel, that's what we're basically looking for. I'm okay with that. All right, and we're going to come back in. Send it back. Now it's just where do we want it? Now notice this one's just hiding. We can always unify it. We can always do other things. So I just want this one to kind of go right along the base there. I'm just hiding that over here. So notice we can hide it. No one's going to know. No one's going to see it. All right. He's looking cute. File save. All right. So for this video, we have added in our brushes. We've expanded our brushes. And then we have done line paints. So we are going to be doing our stitches on the next video. We are also going to be adding in some shadows. Most of that is going to be done with the, the knife tool, and we might also get fancy. Right now, I want you to save, 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 and we will bounce over to the next tutorial, and we'll have some more fun. So thanks for hanging out, and I will see you on the next Teddy Bear tutorial.